G'day. Today I'm going to play a little bit different Fly Corp since I've finished all countries mode. Um, you can see here that the main thing that I haven't yet done is free play. I do have one scenario to go that, that I'm still playing around with. I'm not overly confident about making videos on the scenarios because you can usually generally, it's going to be based on the randomly generated um, sort of things that come up or whether someone's going to sue you or that a billionaire wants to give you an insane amount of money. Um, that's where you're going to win and lose a lot of those. So it's a lot of times just playing them until you get lucky or the cards just fall your way correctly. But with free play, I thought there would be an interesting challenge that I could give myself that, that could make some um, some interesting viewing. So let me just make sure this restarts because normally it doesn't. Normally it always gives you whatever you were doing the last time you played. Okay, so one thing that, that people did say a lot in my all countries mode, when I was making my connections from France to America, um, Spain, to Mexico or whatever. Some people said, well, the way you should be doing it is you go UK to Iceland, Iceland to Greenland, Greenland to Canada, because that means that there's more planes because they're all traveling shorter distances. So I thought, all right, well, what if we do a challenge where what I have to do is connect every single city in the world on a single string? So for example, if you're connecting in the very, if, you want, if you're in Argentina and you want to get to New Zealand, you would have to connect through every single city in South America, then lead up through North America, connect every single city, come across the Atlantic, connect every single city through Africa, across Europe, across the Middle East, across Asia, down, and then get to New Zealand. So you would essentially have to travel through every single city in the world. Is it possible? Now, definitely I'm not doing this in all countries mode because to that I say, probably not too possible to do it with, the, um, with overloading. In this mode, at least, what will happen is that they will overload, but it'll just give me a 30% penalty uh, and it feel like this could be a fun way to try and see if you can get through all the countries in the world and how badly uh, this goes. Now, if our connections are staying as short as, say, what Birmingham's got here, we might be okay. Um, a connection like Glasgow is it will be good. Um, generally, when you start in a country, you'll get more cities in it. So that's sort of why I'm starting in London here, because I want someone as north as possible in England or Scotland, I suppose. Um, because we want to be as short a distance as possible to get to Iceland. But the very first question that we have here is what's going to be shorter? Is it going to be shorter to connect from um, Glasgow to Iceland? Or should I go from Ireland? Put Ireland in the middle. So we'll just unlock that for now. And we'll just make that connection. So possibly what we could do is this is a very short connection here. So we could have Birmingham bounce to Dublin and then Dublin bounce to Manchester. Uh, the other thing that I'm trying to work out how you would um, how you would lay it out in a setup like this is who do you want at the end of the line? So obviously you want South America is not that busy um, and neither is Africa. So you, so the idea that Africa is somehow going to end up in the middle of this um, this whole layout is possibly a bad thing. Potentially what I'd want to try and do is see if I can work out a way to get out and then come back. But I don't think I could because the idea of having to travel to New Zealand just to come back to New Zealand to go all the way back to Africa seems pointless. So these outliers really should be the, um, the end of the line. So let's sell, let's sell this line here and then we will move. Oh, actually we could probably Go Portmouth to, to there, we'll sell that. Um, sell that. We won't do that. Let's just connect those two for now. now you can see obviously like a lot of these guys are gonna hit red, especially through the middle um, of a layout. And for now, as long as like, see this is gonna keep hitting that, that that's fine. Uh, it's not it's not all country mode and we're not going to sync for it but you can see how all the planes in the central section are already red so we do need to start upgrading planes upgrading the amount of planes on these routes so essentially have a model of efficiency we surely we should be able to have it that um let's think about what way we want this to connect now actually so let's let's change this up we'll sell those come down to manchester back to Kingston upon Hull, Norwich, London, London to Birmingham, we'll sell. Now this is definitely one where I do hope that we get a wealthy investor that wants to spend all of their money with us. 
Now that ends up being a, the longest line of the lot. We come from Portsmouth. So maybe what we can hope is that we get Calais in there and then we can just connect across there. All right, we've got Dundee, we've got Cork. But now with Cork, we're traveling further away from where Iceland will be, but it is kind of the end of the, of the island routes. But we are just going to focus in on getting these two, um, these two countries just sort of built together. And what we'll do is we won't go to France next. We will go to, um, okay, so let's go. Okay, let's flick this around the other way now. So we'll sell that. We'll sell that. We will go across and then come back. So London's the last port. England. And that's not too bad because that means that now we're sort of bouncing up back towards Iceland. And we might take that as our as our escape point out. But the question is on what happens if I don't do anything from here. If I can just continue to sort of sit on these two countries, am I just going to get more and more cities here? Because now I've got an even better city for connecting to Iceland in this. But the shortest trip that I could make to get from, from here to Ireland would be I'd make Manchester to Dublin. I would have these four connect. Um, and then I'd have Belfast go to Newcastle. Or I suppose what I could do is I could sell that route. You can see there's going to be a lot of tinkering involved in, in building our most op like efficient line. I'm sure it won't end up being that efficient anyway. Okay, and then we've got London connecting to Dover, which surely will be our closest point to France. Okay, so let's go let's sell that route. Let's go that and then that way. Now, the main reason I want to go for Iceland next is I'm sure that I'm only going to get one city, which should hopefully make life a little bit easier. And it means that as I can get Iceland and then Greenland, these will start to be longer longer trips. Um, and the I'll start to make a bit more money with my, my arrivals. So at the moment, you can see there's all red planes going everywhere. Uh, but obviously people are only going to pay for their ticket once they arrive at their destination. Now, ideally, if we can have some of these tiny little routes have a ton of, um, ton of planes on them or, or have major planes on them, they'll be so efficient in moving people in there that they won't ever be a problem. Like, so for example, in here, the, all these routes would be, if imagine having five planes on these routes, no one will ever be waiting anywhere. They'll just constantly be able to shift through people to the next place. They'll be a really good assembly line of movement. But, um, funny because I'm getting so many I'd say cities here just because I haven't opened up whatever's to come next but I'm in a definitely a, a situation of I can't afford to go anywhere else because um because they always keep opening new cities and I have to keep redesigning my line every time we do okay so we're now all right cool that's an all right one to get just before we we move off into Iceland Okay, so 389 is what that's going to cost us. Now, what's our longest route at the moment? Probably Dublin to Manchester. And we've got, as I say, we've got nothing in Wales, but we've got Cardiff. I suppose North North Wales isn't the biggest place in, in the world. So, because there's definitely probably a lot of available space here that we could get, get a city, which would shorten this which is definitely in the grand scheme of things not going to be an overly long route it does really make me want to um create a um like just focus on this to make it more efficient but you can clearly see that the longer i just sit here the more it gives me more and more cities just in this section um it's definitely giving me an interesting spot on lerwick could not tell you what island that's sitting on. 
Wow, we're even getting multiple Icelandic cities. So the distance of that is now down to 282, which I suppose is a positive if in, in strategy of just sort of like sitting for so long on these few countries. Okay. Now this is where we, I'm going to give myself a pass. Anytime that I have a city or a country locked down, I am going to be allowed to obviously fly around it um, just to not have my entire network collapse. I'm getting a lot of Icelandic cities though. But this is possibly a positive because this is going to be what would otherwise have been the longest part of the trip. And if we can have the planes breaking down to even smaller sections, why not? 881 to get Greenland. really waiting on that money and I would love to start to have that burst of money so I can start upgrading these planes buying more planes um, going from there certainly this route here is going to need a few, a few upgrades but I do want I think I do want to have Greenland and then Canada open and then I'll start to just spend money on upgrading what I have because again Canada would be a good country in what I've got going on here to have a lot of cities um, open in. So I imagine that possibly I won't just run across Canada and then go into the United States. I'll try and see if we can work possibly across the mid middle of the United States and working back across the Canadian border and then come back down. It really will depend on what uh, what cities we end up getting. Okay, so there's Greenland. Now that is still on the far side of the country. I can't imagine that much else is going to open in Greenland. I don't think there's too many cities in Greenland. Possibly, this would possibly be some of the smallest cities in, on the map, uh, population-wise. So we'll go to... Let's have a look. So that's... 453 and that's 454 so we might go to the north the further north one uh because as they're working towards canada we want to get to more south i'm not even going to attempt to pronounce these ones i feel like the qa would be a different sound to the qo and the q on its own at the back you yeah, like maybe a k sound i don't know I don't know how, uh, what, what, I don't know what they speak in Greenland, really. It's definitely a country I'm interested in visiting. So is Iceland. Iceland's very much up list. Um, and if I was in the vicinity of Iceland, I'd love to see if I can make a, um, stop over to Greenland as well. I think it's, I think Iceland's one of the few places you can fly to Greenland from. Is that right? We're certainly getting as many Greenland cities as we can here. And I do think that going from the top, that's starting to look a bit a bit shorter. Or 12, so we've cut even more off there. And that's somehow that's that's longer than that. Oh now he's a problem though. That's my punishment for being uh being too long on Greenland. I wonder if that if this is like um that actually does literally translate to upper Narvik. I mean naval is a it's an English word, right? So this could be possibly upper waters. I don't know. I don't know how they speak in Greenland. I don't want to destroy a language more than I already have. Now he definitely... So this is this is where we would consider a change here. So he's 412, he's 493, so he's actually further away. So possibly what we want to do is just change this route 
so that to sacrifice the length of this route here, we will connect him this way and then connect them so that he's got the shorter route. I mean, you can obviously see the big thing here is that these Greenland cities, I would expect would have at least one of these cities surely doesn't have 100,000 people in it. These would be five digit populations. Um, and I think that even once you get beyond, um, and you can see that, that you can't really get off the coast, I suppose, of Greenland. I imagine once, you, once you're off the coast, you're what, just straight into, into ice. These guys are just patiently waiting to get anyone over to make this connection. Now, as soon as we have this connection, we should be a bit more go ahead to, um, you can see all these people are waiting to go to Greenland. It's the, the hottest thing right now. Um, but we need, we need to make that one connection. And as soon as we do, you'll watch red plane after red plane just start to, to load particularly these longer routes, and that's where we are going to have to get these, these going. And you can see the internal planes in, in England are all green. It's almost like there's no one moving anymore because everyone just is waiting to go to Greenland. So I'm not making any money because we can't, we can't get anyone where we need to be. Yeah, $412 away from our destination. That's part of the problem that you'll actually see in, in things like all country mode or, or part of the difficulty of it is that when you do open a new place, that becomes a new place that everyone wants to visit. So you'll see all this surge of, of people start swinging in a, in a direction. And that's basically what we're, we're currently stuck with right now is because everyone is waiting to go somewhere else that they're currently not connected to that we can't move anyone internally. Now, um, our income has just grown to a halt. The furthest north I have been on the planet would be, while we're waiting, we can add this because I'm talking about Greenland and Iceland, is Alaska. And it was, what was the name of the city? Not even that high. It's gonna rack my brain. So the furthest, furthest south I can tell you, on the other hand, is Invercargill, New Zealand, all the way down there. And you can see I would probably have to go to Southern South America to, to top that one. But Canada, it's now gonna bother me. Oh, sorry, Canada, Alaska. Cancel flights to Dover. Well, I think we can cope with that that loss. Well, let's sell that route. Just a bit more money, because I realized that that was just part of our honesty system. It's gonna bother me now till I figure out what the name of that city was. I'm sure you're all on the edge of your seats. While we sit here slowly watching dollar by dollar tick up because no one's going anywhere because they want to go to Greenland. But what this hopefully will mean is that the second that that, that does open up, and this is still the cheapest one, we should see a sudden surge of money. But it is a painful, painful wait until then. Talkeetna. Talkeetna is where I went to in Alaska. The hot, which would be, I want to say, probably there ish. So that is the furthest north I've been. And that is the furthest south. So, certainly a bit further north to go. Um, I would love to head up here. It's counting as Norway, but it's Svalbard? Is what it's called? I asked that in another video too, and someone did say it, and I've since forgotten. Oh, cool! Everyone wants to go to Greenland. Hot take.
Now what I could do is sell this line and then have enough money to build this line so at least the population of Iceland can go and arrive. And then with that money I can build this line again. I'm just overweighting here so let's do it. 290. That is almost as expensive. But you can watch this now. So we can see this guy's now gone green. This guy's gone red. And now all that, that red will shift this way. And then this guy here will to bear that load. Look at poor poor England is slowly waiting. Now put in the investment of a second plane here. I can't believe that no one from from here is actually waiting to go to Iceland. That's all England, so this is actually no benefit at all to, to what I was expecting. We'll obviously come good once we do have more than one person there. Uh, once more we have more than one country connected, but otherwise it is just all of these people sitting there. This is painfully slow. There's not even a point in building around that at this point, I don't think. Um, they're not going, people aren't traveling anywhere anyway. Because I realize what's happening essentially is it seems like what they just cap out at 50 and they don't continue to accrue more people. So what should I be doing? Ex including, like, increasing the size of these these places that they actually will travel internally? We're almost there. We're two people away from... There we go. Doors open, boys. Here we go. Let's watch all these red planes start to move. Except for these guys down here, because Cardiff's closed for another three minutes. But we'll just let it stay closed for now. I won't bother building around it. Because money's been so tight at this point, we may as well just wait three minutes for this part of the, the network to sort of clear itself up. We'll let that guy help shift people a bit quicker. Yeah, it is a, quite a nice sort of like movement of, of people that's created as it starts to go. You can see that everyone, that, that efficiency or that, that money is going to start to flow a bit more now as well. Just because people can actually, um, like more people can show up at these, these airports as well as opposed to just the maxed out 50. So what's happening then if people are dropping off 50 people at an airport? Are they not arriving until... Like so say that guy drop he's he's dropping off more people than this airport can hold, right? But it's just not dropping them off anywhere. Okay, so now we're starting to see a bit more of a bit more money coming in because we we do have this a bit more efficient. Now the good thing is that I think that I own every single city that exists across these four countries. And this is actually kind of fun. The idea that as I open a new country, if I do this slow enough, it will actually give me every single city that exists in that country. So for that reason, I might actually open France very soon just to, to give France that long to... Um... Where's Brussels sit? Does Brussels sit down here or up here? Let's bring in Belgium, put Brussels in as our, our next connection, and we'll see if we get a second Belgium city. Okay, so the other thing that I would like to do is try and up the size of the planes and the size of the airports um, in a lot of places. We certainly don't have the money to do it, we're not even close to having the money to do it. Um, but it is what... Obviously, like, my sort of end goals would be ideally. Now, the problem is that any time that we upgrade one airport, if we upgrade the planes on this guy, he's just going to move more and more stuff to Newcastle. So Newcastle is going to struggle a bit more. And so, man like, moving those planes to Manchester is going to be sort of its own nightmare. Um, hopefully, they do the announcement at some point to say, like, all right, we're going to upgrade all your planes uh, because that's 
that will be where this becomes a lot easier. But what we will also do is try and just get a few extra planes going on these routes too. These longer ones, because they will be our money makers. I feel like the people of Belgium might be could be easily offended if they are with whatever the population of the second largest Belgium city is, assuming that Brussels is the largest population at that, may not be, um, versus what the size of, of these guys are. Let's look it up, shall we? What do we think the smallest city is? I'm going to bet that this is the smallest city uh, in Greenland. It has, as of 2020, a population of 1,092. And it is an, yeah, it's on a, on a small island off the side. Springtime place is what the translation of that is. Springtime place, quite ironic. I assume the, the name is made by the same ironic person that called that land Greenland. Someone was very optimistic as they were naming that part of the world. Although it could be very lovely in springtime. You can imagine it's very dark at, at some times of the year, though. Okay. So we're up to a thousand. Now, the main problems here we can see are all in our red cities here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to upgrade a few of these. Not necessarily to relieve the stress of... Um, of what they're experiencing, but more to just give us more passengers uh, in uh, in these airports. That that if London's maxing out, let's let's up the population because let's try and get more people in our in our air network. We can see plenty of green planes moving around. That won't do. We want to we want to be making our money. Now, one, one thing that people have pointed out, because I've, I've said it's a bit hard sometimes to work out what the population of cities are, what, like what is the biggest cities. And this is where, where some people give the answer, that you can see that if I zoom out this far, London is the only one that has a name. If I zoom in a little bit, um, you can see that now Brussels, Cardiff, Birmingham, Manchester, Glasgow, Newcastle, Dublin all come in. And so it's not till I go all the way in that I get all the other cities. So that's that's where you're um, you're using it as a gauge of what are the major cities. Okay, so hopefully the investments in those bigger cities means that there's a bit more passengers traveling around here. Although I suppose the problem again there is that if a passenger arrives at a city that can't handle that amount of people, they're just not going to arrive. So we do want to up our, our cities as much as possible. And again, we, we can't do anything but just sort of wait, I suppose, on that. Now, I would like to open Canada next, but again, that's going to be a long flight. But we would like to have as many cities as possible in Canada. We want in Nova Scotia, but I can't quite see Nova Scotia there unless that's what this section is here. But Nova Scotia should be an island. Um, and we'll run all the way across to Vancouver. So I imagine we'll get Montreal, Toronto. Uh, Ottawa. Trying to name my uh, my Canadian cities, and I think as good as I can do is if they have an NHL team, Calgary. <laughs> okay, so it's going to cost us nine hundred and seventy-two to open it, and then we could probably predict that we're going to be paying. Um... Oh, leave us alone. Thousand dollars, and I also like if someone has a problem with their luggage, I would probably say this is the one time I will completely concede that you had problems with your luggage. Imagine if you are flying from here to Brussels and you said, all right, we're, you can check your bags and you don't have to worry about them. You don't have to collect them again until you arrive in Brussels. Are the connecting flights? Yeah, we'll, we'll transfer that every single time. Don't you stress about that. Don't you stress that your bag is going to be unpacked and repacked onto these planes this many times. That will work out for you.
Because I do feel like once we start to upgrade the planes, upgrade the amount of planes on these small routes, we want to do all of them at once. We want to go, all right, let's upgrade this guy, upgrade this guy, work our way through the network. It would be great if I just had a button that would say remove. Like, like the offers that it does do to say remove all planes, I would love that if that was just a feature of the game. That I had a thing sitting here that said I could choose to upgrade all of my existing level 1 planes to level 2 planes. I could choose to pay an, a much larger sum and I can remove level 1 planes existing from the game. If that was just stuff that I could do at some point at my own choice as opposed to having to wait, wait for the randomly generated message to, to give me that major benefit. Um, that would definitely be appreciated. Okay. So there we go, we got Ottawa. So... Have a look at this, we've got 922 to get from the lowest point. And it's 891 from there. So the question would be... It's Toronto, I'd say? The question would be, well, do I want to connect from the south or do I connect from here as a slightly shorter flight and then just fly this this route over to here and then back just to, because I think I will, just to, we may as well give this longer flight, make that slightly shorter because this this flight here is going to be at the mercy of, of how long this takes anyway. So we may as well uh, correct it. Now we're going to have to shift that over to Montreal anyway. But for now, what we'll do is we'll just make Montreal the end of the, the Canadian line just so we can have those passengers on the move. We will upgrade both of these. Because we want, we expect, again, that we'll have a, uh, a Canadian surge of places. The passengers all wanting to come this way. Now, hopefully as well, even though we've got so few countries, we will, um, all right, cool. So Quebec's getting us slightly closer again. We won't make our new really long line yet because that was expensive. Uh, instead, what we'll do is we'll just connect these via um, just sort of each other until we reach a point where we go, okay, cool. So that's, that's all our Canadian cities and Quebec or wherever is going to be the closest. So we'll just sort of bounce around a little bit weird in, in Canada for now. The, the thing that I really don't have yet that I want to do is the efficiency of this. Now, what I think I will do is I'm going to make the decision that... Okay. So he's... 763, sorry, we'll jump back to what I was saying. 763, he's 872. Now, is that Nova Scotia? I can't tell you where Halifax is, so I don't know. It's Halifax in Nova Scotia. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll connect... Connect him there. We will then get rid of that route again. We'll go to that one. We'll sell this one. We'll then connect him to Quebec. Then get rid of Ottawa, and we'll get rid of that, and we'll go this way. Toronto can connect to London, and we will sell that route. And then we will go up to Thunder Bay, Winnipeg, home of the Blue Bombers, go Blue Bombers. And... So what I would like to do with the money that we, we gain from the Canadian expansion, because like I said, I would like to leave Canada... Oh, even shorter. Uh, leave Canada to sort of expand... Um, expand out as much as it can, because it's fine for it to sort of stretch across the country. Um, a lot of these might get split if we do end up with places uh, in the in North um, the United States. But for now, we can just sort of like expand with as many cities as possible uh, across Canada. It's fun. It's fun learning about these um, all these cities that I may ne never have heard of. No harm in learning something new or admitting you don't know something. 
St. John's, I would imagine, has to be pretty small, right? Alright, let's do a quick... Let's learn a few quick things about these Canadian cities up here. Halifax is in Nova Scotia, so there we go, I nailed that one. I didn't nail it, I asked it physically. Nova Scotia is an island, be it via a very small inlet, so... I mean, it might be... It, I don't know, a map, you could forgive it for being attached, so we'll allow that. I won't... I won't riot just yet. St. John's, I couldn't even tell you where that St. John's is going to be, and I'm going to guess it's going to be hard to find by just googling St. John's. Cool, we continue moving our way across Canada. Um, let's sell that. Go Halifax to St. John's. And then St. John's across. We're going pretty deep. I didn't realize Edmonton was so, so north. St. John's is in Newfoundland. It's the camp largest city of the Canadian province of Newfoundland. Give me a population then. With a population of 108,000 as of the... What was that? As of 2016. So again, it's... It's not massive, but compared to the cities it's attached to, I'd say it's, it's a juggernaut. Okay, I mean, I want to I want to go back and focus on these um, these English cities, but I feel that I keep every time I go to where um, we're going to get pulled back that way. So what I'm going to do is this is going to be the first thing that I work on is the, the Americas. Uh, this is probably what we'll do in the at least the next video. Um, the Americas is what I want to sort of focus on next. So what I would like to do is try and stop seeing this as red as it is. Now that's going to be a combination of trying to upgrade the planes that are moving in between these. Now as those planes become 50 seaters, it means that if it's a 50 seat um, city, that it's going to, uh, to be connecting to, it's just going to clean the whole thing out or it's going to dump too many people on there that it can't handle it. So what we want to do is then try and upgrade all the cities too. Um, so this is now going to be a really slow and steady process to, to try and get all of this going and, and possibly one that, that justifies why we want to do this early on these countries that we already have, because when we get to future cities, what we can do is we can just try and do this as we get those new cities. That being said, every time I get a new city and say, if I get somewhere like North America, surely a lot of those Canadian routes are going to be rebuilt. But I think we can say with confidence at this stage the um, that the UK and Ireland are done. Sorry, that's not what I wanted. I'll sell you for now, just to keep it clean. Um, that this is the, the final route of the United Kingdom, that it will end in Dover, whether it connects to Brussels or potentially a, a North French city and it will exit via Lerwick. So it doesn't matter what else is going on, we can upgrade every city and every airline in this this little setup because they are done. And equally, so is Iceland, so is Greenland, and Canada is now what our, what our sort of work in progress is that we will now have to connect all of these cities. We'll wait till we've got the US, and once we know that the what's happening on the southern side of... Um, southern side of Canada, then we can sort of finalize them and we can start to upgrade all of those cities too. It does mean that we will reach a point where if we're not, um, if we're not, say, um, fully upgrading the Canadian side of this, oh, I've got to stop clicking on the United States, uh, the Canadian side of this, it, it will cause the, um, so there'd be an absolute bottleneck on whatever the city is that is all the way upgraded, which would probably be this guy. That'll be upgraded. And then it'll just reach here where it'll constantly struggle. Um, but that is where we will leave it on this one. Slowly working our way across Canada and attempting to improve what we've got going in, in England until hopefully we can one day not see anything red in there at all. But it is always going to be the central point of the line. So there should be a lot of people constantly traveling through there. All right. Well, thanks for watching this one. And uh, until next time, I'll catch you later. See ya.